Good evening and welcome. This is Prime Time News on TV1. Today is the 26th of October 2021. I am Jaima Ratnaika for the News Plus team. Let's start off our bulletin with a look at your headlines for tonight. News First Headlines Main Sponsor Valuable Finance Best Finance Company Army Commander in Russia receives grand welcome in Moscow. Agreement reached to retest contaminated Chinese fertilizer. A name change for the vessel carrying fertilizer to Sri Lanka. Farmers born of abandoning cultivations if fertilizer shortage is not resolved. Indian businessman Gautam Madani leaves Sri Lanka. Focus drawn on investment projects such as wind power plants. Eleven government parties meet once more. News first headlines. Main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. On to your lead story for this evening. The first poppy flower to commemorate Remembrance Day was pinned on President Gotabi Rajpaksa today. It was conducted at the Presidential Secretariat. Chairman of the Sri Lanka Ex-Servicemen's Association, Major General Upal Pereira, pinned the poppy flower on President Gotabe Rajapaksa. Foreign countries commemorate Remembrance Day on the 11th of November annually. The commemoration is held in Sri Lanka on the closest Sunday to the 11th of November. Meanwhile, Army Commander General Shravinder Sova, who is on a visit to Russia, was welcomed with military honours in Moscow. The army commander is visiting Russia based on an invitation by the commander-in-chief of the Russian Land Forces, General of the Army, Oleg Salyukov. He was welcomed in Moscow with a Guard of Honor parade and a Russian army band with four squads of the Russian Land Force. General Shravinder Sova then paid floral tributes at the tomb of the unknown soldier at the Kremlin's Alexandrovsky Garden. The army commander will meet senior military officials during his visit. Government officials have agreed to retest fertilizer samples imported from a Chinese corporation. State Minister of Agriculture Shashindra Rajapaksa said the agreement was reached at a meeting between the Chinese ambassador and officials from the Chinese firm yesterday. The Agriculture Ministry had initially awarded a tender to China's Qingdao Seawind Biotech Company to import organic fertilizer. But two tests conducted by the National Plant Quarantine Service on the fertilizer samples had shown they contain harmful bacteria. The Chinese company had written to the Director General of Agriculture proposing to retest the samples at a facility agreed by both parties. The letter was sent as the ship carrying organic fertilizer was heading to Sri Lanka. But the Director General of Agriculture had decided to deny entry for the ship and the fertilizer that was on board. Yesterday, State Minister of Agriculture Shashendra Rajapaksa and the Director General of Agriculture had met with officials of the Chinese company. The meeting was attended by the Chinese ambassador to Sri Lanka. A decision has been made to retest the fertilizer at an institution agreed upon by both parties. They made the request saying they can't accept the tests conducted in Sri Lanka as the testing method isn't accredited. We didn't pressurize them. But we requested to withdraw the ship and not to bring the stocks here as we won't allow to unload it. This is a company that supplies fertilizer to 16 countries including the United States, Australia and Canada. 
Therefore, we propose to test the fertilizer samples at a facility agreed by both parties and to make a decision after that. We didn't make a decision. We don't have an idea of how this must be done. Yesterday I explained this to the Chinese High Commissioner. We didn't do this out of anger. Even if I want to import these stocks, it can't be done because there is a law. They are ready to incur the expense of conducting the testing process again. We said there is no issue with that. We went for this because it might affect the international trade agreements. We imported fertilizer from India after rejecting stocks from China. Therefore, I stepped in to solve that problem. It wasn't my problem. This is a transaction. What has happened to the hippo spirit ship that left China's Qingdao port with 20,000 metric tons of fertilizer? Reports emerged in recent days that the ship was moving towards Colombo, although it was out of range on tracking systems. Although its current position is not visible, vessel trackers show the ship was to reach Sri Lanka yesterday. Meanwhile, the ship info international shipping tracker shows the hippo spirit has entered Sri Lankan waters under one of its previous names. Online data showed the name as Seo Explorer. A ship cannot change its identification number, although its flag or owner can be changed. Accordingly, both names of the ship are registered to the same number. The ship was spotted in Sri Lanka southeastern waters yesterday. Agriculture Director General Dr. Ajanth De Silva told News First he had received credible information that the ship is 12 nautical miles off Sri Lanka. The Kalamba Ports Harbour Master said the ship is out of range, although GPS technology had shown it was in Sri Lanka's southeastern waters a few days ago. The Harbour Master said the ship hasn't asked permission to enter Sri Lanka. Uh, the Sri Lanka Ports Authority Chairman Nihal Kepidipola has instructed to deny entry to the Colombo port for the ship carrying substandard organic fertilizer. Therefore, it has been restricted from entering Sri Lanka's port. We have clearly informed them that the government isn't ready to accept this substandard fertilizer. This is the final report that was submitted by the plant quarantine service. This clearly states the details of the sample that was sent by this company. The plant quarantine service has carried out every possible test to detect hazardous microorganisms in the fertilizer. They have done the culture test, the gram stain test, the pathogenesis test, the biochemical test and a molecular analysis. These samples have gone through all these tests. Following these tests, the plant quarantine service has detected the two Irvinia bacteria named Irvinia chrysanthemi and Irvinia carotovora. They have also detected varieties of Bacillus bacterium as well. Therefore, no one can challenge this report because they have submitted their final report after using all the scientific methods on all fronts. The Qingdao Seawind Biotech Group issuing a release has requested to retest its fertilizer for harmful microorganisms such as Irvinia by directing samples to a third-party testing organization, specifically the Swiss SGS Group. It added that all parties must accept the subsequent test results unconditionally. The group notes that it would transport the goods back if Irvinia contamination is confirmed. However, if such a contamination is not detected, the buyer must accept the goods and arrange payment. In conclusion, the release states, as the supplier, the Qingdao Seawind Biotech Group holds the right to investigate inaccurate and malicious reports published against the company as well to assess the legal binding of such claims. The Commercial High Court issued another enjoining order against Shindao Seawin Biotech Group today. The enjoining order was issued so as to prevent any payment being made from the People's Bank on a letter of credit opened on behalf of Qingdao Seawin Biotech Group. The Ministry of Agriculture announced via a statement today that Senior Professor Buddhi Marambe from the Faculty of Agriculture at the University of Peradeniya was removed from all positions he held at the Ministry of Agriculture. Accordingly, he was removed from the Expert Committee to formulate a National Agriculture Policy, Sri Lanka Agriculture Sector Modernization Project and the Smallholder Agribusiness Partnerships Program. 
On the contrary, Professor Buddhi Marambe, addressing a media briefing today, revealed that he has not been notified in writing regarding his removal. I am not an employee of any institution falling under the purview of the Ministry of Agriculture. Last December, the Minister of Agriculture extended an invitation to me saying that a committee of 13 individuals was being convened to formulate a national fertilizer policy. Our duty was to draft the policy and to hand it over to the minister in charge. I have not received anything in writing until now, stating that I have been removed from my post as a committee member. The committee's tenure ended last month. Why are they removing me this month? I do not see how this is a question. Meanwhile, Professor Mudita Vidana Pathirana has resigned as chairman of the National Child Protection Authority. He has confirmed his resignation in a message on WhatsApp. Farmers of Rajangane staged protests demanding fertilizer for the Maha season. They say they are unable to begin cultivation, although water has been released to their fields from the Rajangane reservoir. Shame on the President and the Prime Minister. Ministers in the government are now preparing to import vehicles for themselves. This is shameful. Farmers are insisting for fertilizer to be brought down instead of importing vehicles. The ship is near the Colombo port. Who has granted permission to allow the entry of this ship, which is carrying organic fertilizer, that was rejected by the Agriculture Minister? Reveal that to the people. Details on the liquid fertilizer from India haven't been revealed to the country. The government is remaining silent on this ship. We wish to tell the government that it won't be too long before the farmers lose their patience. We will bring all farmers in the north central province to Colombo and march towards your home. Meanwhile, Polonnara District Secretary W.A. Dharmasiri chaired a cultivation meeting in Minneria today. The meeting focused on releasing water for the Maha season and to discuss cultivation during the next season. They have already made a decision before they started discussing this. The media wasn't allowed to attend this meeting. Why are they barring the media? If it's released through the media, the people will get to know about this. Let's see the results of these moves by March. Meanwhile, the hunger fast launched by 41 farmers associations in Alhara in the Polonora district entered its third day today. Sri Lanka Podhijana Perimana MP Amarkiti Atokorala met with farmers engaged in the hunger fast. We don't need fertilizer concessions. We can cultivate after buying fertilizer. We need organic fertilizer and chemical fertilizer. Otherwise, we can't continue farming. People will be left begging. If the harvest fails this season, we will take to the streets with them. We are requesting to try this first. We are asking for at least 50% of fertilizer. We can't cultivate if we don't have at least half of that. We don't represent a political party. Farming is our livelihood. Concerns have been raised over the importation of nanonitrogen from India. I told that they are purchasing a litre of nanonitrogen at 464 Indian rupees. That is around 1,200 Sri Lankan rupees. But they are planning to purchase this fertilizer from a Sri Lankan company at 12 US dollars and 6 cents. That is 2,500 Sri Lankan rupees. Earlier they told us that they are purchasing a litre at 12 dollars and 6 cents. But it was later revealed that this was the cost of 500 millilitres. If they import 3.1 million bottles at this price, the government will incur a loss of about 6 billion rupees. Who will benefit through the 6 billion rupees? It will end up in someone's pocket. Yeah. What is the progress on obtaining compensation for the Express Pearl tragedy? More details on this story and much more come after the short commercial break. TV1 News First, main sponsor. Students complete the ACBT University Entry Foundation in 8 months for 288,000 rupees. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Bellboy has got you covered. Download Bellboy today to get all your household appliance fixing and repairs done. Now available on Android and iOS. 
Welcome back to the news. Leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadasa, reiterated that Ranjan Ramanayaka must be given full freedom in the name of humanity. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa met former MP Ranjan Ramanayaka when he visited the Angnukula Palace prison this morning. Ranjan Ramanayaka was imprisoned for contempt of court. Following the visit, the opposition leader expressed his views to the media. <laughs> At the moment, Ranjan Ramanayaka is at the prison hospital. He has sustained injuries to his spine and his knee. I think he should undergo better treatment. I think he should be transferred to the Valikata Prison Hospital. We have made a request from the Minister of Justice. We hope that this transfer will be done purely based on humane and health reasons. He wishes to engage in higher studies and obtain a degree while serving his time. If he is transferred to the Valikata Prison, he will be able to engage in his studies. He has never misused state funds. He has never robbed public funds. He has never committed any fraud. He has sacrificed his personal resources to serve the public. We hope that the President will look into this matter and grant full freedom to Ranjan Ramanayaka in the name of humanity. Ranjan Ramanayaka Matituma, the Purna Nidhas, Raja Tantravadi, Aitin Samaga, Purna Nidhas, Labadin, and Katitukarai Kela. Indian billionaire Gautam Adhani and his delegation left Sri Lanka today. They had met the President and Prime Minister yesterday. Indian billionaire Gautam Adani and a 10-member delegation including his family had reached Sri Lanka on two private flights on Sunday. In a tweet, Gautam Adani said he had met President Gotabe Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. The tweet said that the Adani group will explore other infrastructure partnerships in Sri Lanka. This would be in addition to the Colombo Port's West Container Terminal project. He added that India's strong bonds with Sri Lanka have spanned for centuries. It is among the top 15 companies in the world. They were on a private visit to Sri Lanka. They examined possibilities including wind power plant projects. They came to inspect Sri Lanka's potential in terms of energy and the investments that can be made in Sri Lanka. They met with officials including those at the Board of Investment. They also looked into possible investments in renewable energy projects. They examined those possibilities. The business delegation including Gautam Adhani left Sri Lanka at around 4.10 p.m. today. The Express Pearl tragedy brought about unprecedented destruction to Sri Lanka's vibrant ocean and polluted its pristine beaches to an extent which still has not been assessed. However, has Sri Lanka received adequate compensation in the wake of this unfortunate event several months after the saga unfolded? News First's Miyuki Porsche filed this report. It has been nearly five months since the Express Pearl disaster struck, widely considered one of the largest maritime disasters to occur in the Sea of Sri Lanka. Now, it was carrying over 1,400 containers, and these containers were carrying hazardous chemicals as well as tons of plastic pellets known as nurdles. Now, the contaminants, especially these nurdles, continue to pollute the beaches of Sri Lanka to this day. This disaster not only killed marine life, but also disrupted the lives of many fishing communities. Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit, visited the Sarakua beach earlier today to ascertain the progress of beach cleanups taking place in the wake of this disaster. This is our country. The ship owners will leave the country. We asked the government to launch an investigation into this incident which has caused great destruction to our country. Why was this ship burning for days? Why wasn't swift action taken in this regard? That is what should be investigated. I have filed a court case demanding compensation for the fishing community as well. The cleaning process has to be carried out in a proper manner as well. Soon after the tragic event surrounding the Express Pearl unfolded, the government of Sri Lanka sent an interim claim to the operator of the burnt-out container ship Express Pearl, requesting $40 million for response costs accrued through the 1st of June, the day before the vessel partially sank off Colombo. 
In mid-July, Express Feeders, the operators of the vessel, made an initial payment of 3.6 million US dollars to the government of Sri Lanka. In early September, the Ministry of Fisheries allocated 216.5 million rupees to support fishing communities impacted by the tragedy. Although a full assessment on the damages caused by the discharge of the vessel's cargo has not been made yet, many commentators have raised concerns over a particular development on the part of express feeders, the operators of the burnt-out vessel. In June this year, shortly after the disaster, Express Feeders appointed ITOPF and oil spill response to work alongside Sri Lankan authorities to control marine pollution. Interestingly, these appointments were not made by the Sri Lankan government but by the operators of the vessel. Both the International Tanker Owners Pollution Federation Limited and Oil Spill Response Limited are governed by either petroleum companies, ship owners and insurance companies. In such a context, a certain air of uncertainty has arisen on whether these two bodies would act in the best interest of the ship owners or Sri Lankan authorities. What is the progress of obtaining compensation in full for this disaster five months since it occurred? Now here is what experts have to say. Now uh, with regard to the compensation, uh, what uh, I understand is that the owner of the Express Pearl has already obtained the hull insurance from PNI. Now, if the hull insurance has been obtained, it is uh, the government of Sri Lanka that has to obtain that uh, particular uh, uh, payment uh, from the owner because whatever the damage that has caused has been caused to our, our marine environment uh, at large. Uh, we are only depending on the protection and indemnity club, or rather the PNI club, uh, that is going to, to pay. But there is no fund created in Sri Lanka to uh, obtain the compensation. So these are the things that are really lacking uh, in this process. Uh, I cannot say that this has been professionally handled, uh, especially concerning the, uh, the, 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 the uh, damages and losses compensation regimes that are worldwide uh, applied in uh, scenarios uh, such as this. The far-reaching impacts of this catastrophe will not only be felt in our time, but for decades to come. The government of Sri Lanka, along with all responsible authorities, must act swiftly to ensure the debilitating effects of this disaster is minimized to its maximum extent. Because in the end, this is the sea of Sri Lanka, our heritage and pride. Milky Porsche for News First. Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit, has also criticized the government's recent action over the lands in Mutharajwala. We feel the government isn't listening to the people. They are not on the people's side. That's how they're making these decisions. This can't be done. That wasn't what they told us during the election. They promised to stand with the people. Did they fulfill that? The people don't have protection. They are not conducting any form of investigation into the April 21st tax. They are just scratching the surface. The same applies to the Mutharajwala matter. The president has published a gazette to vest the entire area with the Urban Development Authority. People have lived here for 100 or 200 years. It can't be vested with the Urban Development Authority. Who is there in the UDA? Where are they from? Are they aliens? Can they vest these lands with officials by remaining in their air-conditioned rooms? Have they asked about this from the parliamentarians here? When I call the parliamentarian, he says he is unaware of this. That means the people have voted for a fool. The Urban Development Authority also weighed in on the matter and commented regarding the Muthurajavela Sanctuary during a media briefing held earlier today. As a government, we intend to preserve the Muthurajavela Sanctuary in its entirety. Illegal land grabs are occurring. Garbage is being disposed. 
In order to prevent such events from occurring, a gazette was issued. Through this gazette, institutions are empowered to safeguard this wetland. This has been taken over based on the provisions of Article 2 of the Urban Development Projects Special Provisions Act. Why is it taken over using this particular legislation? It is only done if land is being taken over for a special project. That is a directive issued by the President. Ramsar status is not granted easily. That is why the President has clearly mentioned on the Gazette that it will be converted to a Ramsar wetland eventually. We will further develop the canal system to prevent land grabs and preserve the area. Once all this is complete, we can sort approval from the Ramsar Convention. Eleven constituent parties of the government met with the joint trade union of the fuel, power and port sectors today. The meeting took place at the headquarters of the Sri Lanka Communist Party. The discussion had revolved around the LNG deal and the further course of action regarding the project. Minister Vimal Viravansa had left the meeting while it was in progress. The members of the 11 parties expressed their views on the future course of action. It can't be correct when we are doing it and wrong when the United National Party is doing it. If something is wrong, that would be the case, regardless of who is doing it. That's irrelevant. It is wrong even if our parents do it. We can't take emotional decisions simply because we form the government. We are doing this to protect the government and to avoid being distanced from the people. The main crisis is relating to geopolitics. The pressure exerted by the US, China and India has increased. Resolving this geopolitical struggle is important. The government is asking us to go for a strike and to leave the country in darkness and they won't cancel this agreement. Therefore, we wish to tell the people that they will have to remain in darkness for two days. We will go for a strike. The country will be in darkness. JVP senior member Sunil Handuneti and attorney at law Sunil Watagala have filed a ripped application to the Court of Appeal to denounce the decision taken by the cabinet to sell 40% of the shares of the Yugodanavi power plant in Kerabalapitiya to the new fortress organization in the US. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa and the cabinet of ministers, the Ceylon Electricity Board, West Coast Power Private Limited, Lakdanavi Limited, the Monetary Board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, were among the 43 respondents. The application also seeks a writ of mandamus be made on the respondents, preventing them from taking any action with regard to the matter until the application is taken up and its examination is concluded. This agreement is illegal. This agreement has been signed without this company even applying for a tender. They haven't even followed protocol before signing this agreement. The people didn't give the president as well as the cabinet the power or the authority to gamble with it. Therefore, this agreement that has been signed is illegal. This intervention has been done when the Ceylon Electricity Board and the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation were in the middle of evaluating the tenders that were called. What right does the government have to intervene like that? Tenders were called and competitive bids were made. Then the government goes and awards this agreement to New Fortress Private Limited, which did not even apply for tenders, whom 
the government approached and engaged with illegally. Even parties representing the government have opposed this. This agreement wasn't debated in parliament. It was concealed from the public's eye. Even the judiciary hasn't seen this. We are requesting the judiciary to denounce this agreement, which was signed without even the consent of the minister in charge. Sri Lanka's central bank governor is now equal to the status of a cabinet minister. According to the Ministry of Home Affairs, the central bank governor is ranked fifth in the order of presidents of the government of Sri Lanka. Shifting your attention to news from overseas, defiant anti-coup protesters have returned to the streets of Sudan's capital, Khartoum, for a second consecutive day despite a violent response by security forces during the previous one. Army General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan announced a state of emergency across the country. Indian police in Kashmir have filed criminal cases under a stringent anti-terror law against the students of two medical colleges in the region for celebrating Pakistan's victory against India in the T20 World Cup. We won for the News First team. I'm Jaima Ratnayaka alongside our sign language interpreter for tonight, Brian Cruz. Do remember to stay safe, take care and have yourself a good night.